Standard costs are unit costs. Now, companies set standard direct material usage costs and standard direct labor usage costs. Then they compare the actual direct material to the standard. And again, we have variances. And again, we are managing by exception. For direct labor, we have standards for time and we compare the direct labor time to the standard that has been set. In this way, we can evaluate performance and hence control performance. Also, the standard cost accounting system. In the job costing model, we can now set the amount of standards for direct labor and the standards for direct material and set up what's called a standard cost accounting system and analyze the variances between the, what we expected, which is expressed in the standard, and the actual. Standard costs and how management uses standard costs as a control system. That's the subject of this module. And we're going to look at the difference between what a standard cost is and a budget cost. We're going to look at why management uses standard costs and how they set those standard costs. We're going to focus on material and labor, not so much overhead. And to begin with, what is the difference between a standard and a budget? Well, they're similar in the fact that they are both predetermined costs. They're estimates about future costs. However, the difference is that the budget is a total amount whereas the standard is a unit amount. Why does management use standard costs? Well, it really helps in planning. If I want to plan the future and I determine the standard cost to produce one product is this, I can use that standard cost, not the actual cost, to predict and plan for the future. It promotes economy, it makes employees understand and management expects them to spend this much time in completing a job. It helps us in setting selling price, controlling inventory, and it sets up a way to evaluate performance. And like budgeting though, standard costs require input from all the people who will be evaluated using the standard costs. Same within budgeting where we said that budget should be fully participative. Now, we must distinguish between an ideal standard and a normal standard. An ideal standard represents the optimum levels of performance under perfect operating conditions. Now, that means if I evaluated how long it takes somebody to do a job first thing in the morning and use that as a standard, I'm not allowing for the fact that the person would slow down during the day, the person uh, would need breaks and so on. So a normal standard is more applicable. That represents the efficient level of performance to be attained under expected operating conditions. However, the standard should be uh, difficult to attain, but attainable. Let's work through a case study. We're going to establish a standard cost of producing one product. Of course, the standard inputs for direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead is what we're talking about. Now, for direct material, the price standard is the amount that we would pay for that direct material. For example, obviously, 2.7, but we're going to add freight and handling charges and use $3 as the price per pound for the material. And when it comes to how many pounds we should use to produce the product, we anticipate it would require 3.5 pounds, but now we're going to allow for waste and spoilage and use as a standard four. So therefore, the standard amount of material that goes into the production of one unit of product would be $12. $3 per pound times four pounds. Same with labor now. We look at what we pay in hourly wage, and then there are some benefits. COLA is a cost of living allowance. Uh, there are fringe benefits and payroll taxes. So we come up with a standard rate of $15 per hour. And then we look at how many hours it would take to produce one unit of product. 
and the actual time is 1.5, but we're going to build in rest periods and clean up and set up and downtime, and we'll use two dollars, two hours, sorry. So therefore, the total standard direct labor cost would be thirty dollars. And manufacturing overhead is usually done and assigned by the accountant and uses a standard predetermined overhead rate. And let's just for our sake say, okay, it will be $5 per direct labor hour. Now, we develop the total standard cost for the unit. Direct materials, 12, direct labor, 30, and the manufacturing overhead, 10. And we have devised that the total standard cost for one unit, in this case a gallon, is $52. And we can assign the overhead based on a percentage of direct labor costs. There's no need to go into that. However, variances. Now we're going to collect actual data and we're going to compare it to the standard. And if the actual costs are less than the standard, then that's a favorable variance. If it's more, it's unfavorable. So then we're able to analyze variance to determine the underlying factor. And again, this is management by exception. We're focusing on the variance and we're determining whether that variance is significant or material. And a material variance would be anywhere between three and 5%. So those are the variances that we would normally evaluate and investigate. Here's an example. Assume that we produce 1,000 gallons of Zonic Tonic in the month of June. And there are my actual costs, 13,000 for material, 31 for labor, variable overhead, fixed overhead. I have 55,000. Now recall that my standard was $52 a gallon. And if I produce a thousand gallons, I should have incurred 52,000. But I incurred 55, so I have a total variance of 3,000. Now that variance is material, labor, variable overhead, and fixed overhead. Uh, but the total variance is getting to be a little material because that is close to 5% of the 55,000. Let's look at material. We look at each element individually. And keep in mind that the variance is a function of two things. The amount I use, the quantity variance, and the amount I paid, the price variance. So for direct material variance on 1,000 gallons, I use 4,200 pounds, and I paid 310 per unit. So the actual quantity times the actual price, 13,020, the standard, 12,000, so the total direct material variance is 1,020 and it is unfavorable. We spent more than we should have. Now this is a function, as I said, of two things, the amount of pounds I used and the price I paid. So we're going to examine the price first. The material price variance is computed by looking at the actual quantity I used and the actual price versus the actual quantity. So I'm freezing the quantity and I'm comparing the actual price to the standard price at that quantity. And therefore, 4,200 pounds times 320, 4,200 pounds times 1260, I have a material price variance of 420 unfavorable. Well, that's not that significant. So let's look at the quantity variance. The quantity variance, the amount I use, so I use the formula, the actual quantity times the standard price times the standard quantity times the standard price. So this time I'm freezing the standard price and looking the difference in the quantity. So 12,006 is the actual quantity times the standard price. Standard quantity times the standard price is 12,000. I have 600 unfavorable. And now that explains why I have a total unfavorable of 1,020. That's 600 unfavorable on material variances and um, 420 unfavorable on that. So 600 as a percentage of about 12,000, 10% would be 1,200, 600. That's about 5% variance. So it would be worth looking into why we use more material than we should have. Now let's 
Another way of analyzing is this technique. We set up in box one, actual quantity times the actual price. And in box three, the standard quantity times the standard price. And down below, the total variance is box one minus box two, and it's unfavorable. Now, if left is greater than right with this module, it means it's unfavorable. If right is greater than left, it's favorable. So to break that total variance down, I create box number two up there, standard quantity times the standard price. So if I look left, I'm comparing the price variance. If I look right, I'm comparing the quantity variance. And in each case, left the number on the left is greater than the number on the right. Therefore, my variance is unfavorable. Why? Well, the price variance, well, we paid a little more than we thought. What happened, we don't know. We didn't take quantity discounts. Uh, the direct labor variance now we're going to analyze. They incurred 2,100 direct labor hours to produce those gallons. And the standard allowed was two hours a gallon. So it would be 2,000. The rate was 15 but we paid 1480 so first we're going to look at the total variance actual hours times the actual rate minus the standard times the standard rate and i have 1080 unfavorable so that again is a subject a matter of price variance and quantity variance so the price variance then is 420 favorable because i paid less than i have for the standard However, the quantity variance is that it is 1,500 unfavorable. So it's obvious here that total variance of 1,080 masks the fact that we used more labor than we should have in producing this. Now, why was that? Well, was it because of the material we purchased or the control over the labor costs, what have you? it would certainly bear looking into. Again, a different way of analyzing is set up uh, this matrix. Um, one, the actual hours times the actual rate. Three, the standard hours times the standard rate. The total variance then is the difference between those two and it's unfavorable. Now look at the price variance. The price variance, right is greater than left, so it's favorable and the usage variance or the quantity variance is unfavorable. So why? Well, two factors. We paid different wage rates for different employees. We misallocated the workers. Quantity variance, the efficiency of the workers should be looked into. Now manufacturing overhead, again, the variance is there, but we cannot use the matrix in analyzing that. Now, we have reported these variances, and keep in mind that the standard cost was used to produce these products. But when we determine what the variance is, then we should assign that responsibility to the manager who is in charge. And we're going to use, as we said before, the concept or principle, management by exception, and we're only going to look at material variances or significant variances. And therefore, for the uh, reporting of the quantity purchased, um, the actual price, the labor, and so on, we give an ex explanation as to why we had a price variance. Now, lastly, when it comes to reporting on the income statement, keep in mind this company is manufacturing the products based on standard costs. So at the end of the year, they know what the actual price of the the units they sold, 70000 But the cost of goods sold is that standard, 52000 I have a gross profit of 18000 I must now adjust that gross profit by the variances. So the variances around material variances, unfavorable, 600 quantity variance, labor, so on, I have a 3000 unfavorable total variance and therefore I adjust the cost of goods sold to the actual gross profit 15,000 selling them in and income statement. 
So I think you can see that cost accounting system that has been turned into a standard cost accounting system, whether that be job costing or activity-based costing, uh, lends a lot more control over uh, operations by management and it sets up a way to evaluate performance.